for some of us. Our first smoke was probably down in the outhouse. I guess we figured it was a good secluded spot and we had a pretty good chance of getting away with it. The story I'm about to tell reveals how one bush kid wasn't so lucky. It's called The Curing of Young Fred McPhee. On the outer Paru, where most septics are few, and the outhouses still pride of place, poor old Toby McPhee worked a small property with his son and his darling wife Grace. When the milking was due and harvesting too, their son Fred seemed to just disappear. Though they looked everywhere, this bewildered old pair found no trace of their poor little deer. I have the paddock to plough and need the boy now, as the horses are harnessed and ready. Then he saw the smoke rise and, to Toby's surprise, t'was the outhouse that did his young Freddy. So the silly young bloke seems to fancy a smoke. Well, I've just the right cure for him. As he led the horse team, Toby's eyes gave a gleam and the lazy lad's future looked dim. He then hooked the team to the log skids on the loo while the slack was worked out of the chain. With the reins in his hand, he then gave the command and both horses then took up the strain. Poor young Fred, he was perched on the seat when it lurched, though soon ended up down on the floor. With Fred's pants round his knees, Toby heard his wild pleas, but he goaded them horses some more. The lads fag hit the pan and a fire soon began, with the paper and sawdust alight. Then the skids hit a hollow and what was to follow was one hell of a horrible sight. That pan flew in the air and though Fred crouched in prayer, all the angels, they must have been out. For the team and the trot had set airborne the lot and the contents were scattered about. Toby's lungs out of air, he then reined in the pair, and the curing had come to a close. Fred emerged from the door looking terribly sore, while the pong was quite strong on the nose. When there's work now to do on the outer Paru, our young Fred McPhee's work is hectic, for he saves all his dough, but it's not for smokes though, as their place is now going septic. There he goes again, always listening to the races. Do you girls out there have the same problem, always playing second fiddle to the TAB? Well, let me tell you of Milton Taylor's tale, which tells of how one woman went about solving the problem. He called it Racing Widows. I've got this little problem. It's the man I love, you see. He's mad about the races. He loves the TAB. It's his hobby. It's his passion. His all-consuming caper. He even uses form guides instead of toilet paper. We have two lovely children, a daughter and a son. The girl's name is Bendamba and the boy is Flemington. I'll say, how are you, darling? Did you have a lovely day? He'll answer, Get on Harry's boy, he'll win on Saturday. Muttering like a moron with a tranny to his ear. You okay? I question. Correct, wait, he says, all clear. What you want for dinner, love? I lovingly inquire. By golly, this is close. It's right down to the wire. How was work? I ask him. Did you get your jobs all done? Beaten in a photo, but goodness, what a run. Want your eggs with bacon, love, or have them just on toast. The dirty, rotten mongrel, he's pipped me at the post. How about a cuddle, love? Can't do any harm. Wait a bit, he answers. They're off at Eagle Farm. He makes me so frustrated. I really feel like yelling. I ask him, is there someone else? He answers, Michael Pelling. Like me new dress, lovey. I say, all prettied up. Yeah, same colour saintly carried when he won the Melbourne Cup. I thought I'd try to shock him, so I strolled across the floor without a stitch of clothing, completely in the raw. He took a look 
and mumble as he scanned the racing page. Not a flamin' two-year-old, must be wait for age. But I'm going to solve my problem. He'll have to notice me. I'm gonna win the lotto and I'll buy the T-A-B.